itself. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, I think it's recording. Uh, so yeah, if, if anyone doesn't know, uh, hi, I'm Sean, also known as Swix. I run the Data Space podcast where every week we go into AI engineering and foundation models and all that good stuff. We just did one on segment anything too last week. Um, I also run the AI Engineer World Fair where Sandra also spoke uh, recently and uh, there was a lot of <laughs> uh, yeah, I think basically if you're a software engineer building with AI, like this is kind of the conference built for you and then the community uh, that is that is dedicated to people doing like anything that's after the foundation model training. Um, and I also run AI News, which is, uh, I guess you could call it a summarization agent. If you run it on all of AI Twitter and all of AI Reddit and all of AI Discords, it summarizes um, everything that you need to know every single day. Um, and so I, I think the, the, the main thing I've, I've been sort of uh, compiling, this is a blog post that I haven't published. Um, so you're seeing it live for the first time. Um, it's just like the brief history of agents, um, it, it, the, the sort of must know or like the, the major turning points that, you know, I think, I think uh, people want to really talk about. I, I want to take people back to April 2023. This is when like sort of the agent fever really kicked off, uh, it, at least in the modern LLM wave. Um, this chart is the chart of GitHub stars of PyTorch, Bitcoin, Kubernetes, Django, and then AutoGPT. The red line, vertical line is AutoGPT. So it's more valuable in GitHub stars than all these things. And obviously we, uh, you know, that momentum did not last, but I think the, uh, the idea of like the autonomous general purpose agents uh, really kicked off from there. Um, from that, is, it was my first sort of really viral post on, on agents uh, where I sort of mapped out like the, the initial building blocks of what agents uh, should have. And this was later developed by other, other frameworks. We can talk about that later. Um, we also started seeing a lot of funding of uh, the, the basic memory and persistence layer of agents, uh, which is vector databases. So over $235 million invested in vector database products. Um, we, uh, we, also started, we also started seeing... Uh, like like the, the first like really uh, compelling uh, agent papers. So I, I highly recommend if people here are building agents and are interested in agents, they haven't seen the Voyager paper, you definitely should read that as a roadmap for uh, something that uh, an agent can, that can achieve tasks uh, over a very long term. Um, another required piece of reading is Lydian Wang's um, agents research recap. She does all, like, her entire blog is just literature reviews of papers. So it's very high leverage use of time because um, she basically reads all these papers and comments on them and, and organizes them for you. We also started getting the first maps of tooling uh, and we're gonna come back to this a lot more. Um, actually, I'm actually recording a podcast uh, this Friday with, uh, uh, with with some people at OpenAI to, uh, to, to elaborate on this. As well as some thinking on, on uh, memory. Uh, so uh, it's really funny, like, now, the way that people talk about memory, including at Crew AI, um, is how Lillian was talking about this a year ago. And you can see this all uh, basically diffused from research into industry, um, going through all of these all these things. And don't worry, uh, if you just subscribe to the Lane Space uh, um, newsletter, you'll, you'll get all this. Just, just go to Lane.space, you'll, you'll get um, all of these notes as well. Um, so in June, I started, uh, so like that was the sort of precursor to the rise of the AI engineer. I, I wrote this uh, essay in June, and I, I think people kind of really resonated with that, that, that there was a demand for people building AI products um, on top of foundation models as well. And uh, that was the whole, that was the whole start of the, 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 the craze. Uh, in July, we got the release of Code Interpreter, which I, I have called the most advanced coding agents, uh, you know, in, in wide release, um, at, at least until Cloud Artifacts, which, <laughs> which I would say has, has kind of a, uh, replaced it. Um, I think in August, that's when that's when people really started talking about multiple agents, like agents talking to each other and co coordinating uh, between them. Um, this is before Kuwait really sort of kicked off, but Meta GPT are the papers that you want to read on that. Um, Chat Dev and Autogen uh, also really kicked off around about the August uh, timeframe as well. In November, we started really getting the first articulation of um, hey, it's evolving beyond just the human brain analogy into like more of an operating systems analogy. And that's where um, Andre Karpathy really started talking about the LN OS. And I think like that, that's really shaped the, the thinking of, a, of like the, the developer ecosystem around agents as well. So um, concretely what that, what that means is when you have tools, um, there are certain categories of tools that are blessed and probably everyone needs them. So every agent probably needs a browser. Every agent probably needs uh, a code execution environment. Uh, every agent probably need, needs like a specialized sort of uh, search uh, or vector retrieval uh, index. Um, we started getting some of this built in into LLMs. I, I think this is a very interesting early experiment uh, with perplexity. I don't think this API is very popular, but basically they combined search with LLMs and just 
started offering them as online LLMs. So like, I think this is like one of those things where like, we're trying to figure out what the right shape of a public agent API should be. Um, in January, we started talking about uh, screen vision models that Dev released FUYU uh, 22, 22B. Um, since, since then, uh, you know, Dev has been folded into Amazon, but we can talk about that separately. Um, in February 2024, we started actually, uh, we started and celebrated the one year anniversary of ChatGPT not growing. So like having like completely zero user growth. Uh, and the, my general hypothesis is that it was be basically being unbundled into vertical agents, right? Going from a horizontal, one platform does everything into vertical agents like, uh, you know, for, for image generation, for writing, for coding, um, for uh, question answering, for education, and for um, it's just, just general um, automation. Like you could just take the ChatGPT landing page, or you, you can take the ChatGPT tools, uh, checkboxes, every single one of those is either a startup or a verticalized, start, uh, verticalized agent that you can build dedicated for that, that uh, is more specialized for it. Uh, in March, we got the rise of Devin, um, a very controversial startup. Um, but I think one of the things that Devin got right, which I always try to emphasize for people, is that they had four of the basic LMOS tools. They had a chat window, they had the browser, they had the terminal, and they had the editor. Um, and I think that the UX paradigm that Devin pioneered will probably outlast Devin itself, which is that you want to talk to the agents while it is working, while it is planning. You want to be able to see the plan, and you want to alter the plan as it goes along, uh, because that is... That is the way you sort of have a hand on the wheel while it's, while it's kind of self-driving as well. So we'll talk about that later as well. Um, in April, we had the rise of uh, personal AI. Um, we, we started seeing a lot of AI wearables, uh, most recently with the launch of Friend. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think like that confluence is, is more of like a personalization of, of, of AI agents rather than um, you know, any, found any foundational uh, shift. Like it's, it's more like going from the bus business context into like a personal sort of wearable context. In June, we had Cloud Artifacts launch. Um, I, I hope mo uh, people have played with that. I do think that that paradigm should be cloned everywhere. I, I think it's basically the spiritual success of the code interpreter. Like it, it, I think it, it does a lot more and it, it's, uh, it's a lot more effective um, coupled with uh, a good coding model. Um, we also organized the, the World's Fair, the, the conference that I run, uh, where we had a lot of agent tracks. We're slowly releasing that on the YouTube, by the way. So if you're interested in more agent talks, uh, including from all the top agent companies, um, definitely check out the uh, YouTube, like it's it's all free on, online. Um, at the at the World's Fair, uh, Devin gave their first ever talk um, in in a conference setting. Um, they actually released their stack, which I think um, is kind of like a hidden gem because I don't think they, I don't think this, this slide has ever been seen before. This is how Devin thinks about their stack, and each of these components, uh, you can just go onto YouTube. You don't have to take a photo, a crappy photo of this. You just go onto YouTube and search for Scott at the uh, AI Engineer World's Fair. You'll see it. Um, but yeah, they, they talked about knowledge, they talked about um, being able to have a shell and an editor a browser, uh, but they also have like, some interesting uh, things as well that um, I've played around with because I have uh, sort of de demo access to Devin, uh, but playbooks, the idea that you can um, like you have verifiers, can have, the idea that you can have teams of Devins working with each other. These are all like really innovative things that I think you will see um, copies of this cloned uh, in all of them, because I think, I think these are paradigms that will survive any individual product. Um, in July last month, we got Llama 4, uh, sorry, Llama 3, um, but in our podcast with the Llama 4 team, uh, they actually started, to, uh, sorry, oh God, in our podcast with the Llama team, they actually started talking about Llama 4, and I think something that people don't, don't really grasp enough is that um, Llama 4 is going to be about agents. Um, the, the, the same team that worked on Llama 3 is the same team that worked on Gaia, which is the general agent benchmark that Meta is promoting. Um, th these are one and the same team. This, this is Jan LeCun's team. This is Thomas Shalom's team. Um, and they're going to basically just dedicate all of uh, Llama 4 post training to, um, to agent training. Um, so you can listen in on the podcast for that. Uh, we're the only uh, podcast to do that interview with him. We also got OpenAI defining what their agents uh, roadmap should be. Um, so uh, surprisingly, they only think that they're at level two right now, but like we're barely at level two according to them. So GPT-5 or Strawberry will be a level two agent. Um, and they have three, three other levels that they think uh, you know, is, is their general roadmap for the future. So I think that kind of brings us up to, to the present. That was like really fast, like you know, 15 month overview of the, the brief history of agents. Um, the thing I want to leave builders with, because there's, there's only so much we can do um, not working in the large model lab. Uh, that's that's the majority audience that I speak to. Um, I think we should build around assumptions and fundamental trends that we can bet on, right? So one trend is context is going to infinity, right? Um, across all the all the model sizes, it's like getting easier and easier to extend model uh, uh, context sizes to a million and, and beyond. Um, obviously, uh, whether or not it's utilized 
is a is a big question. Uh, I think there's there's some there's some debate over like what the actual utilization is. You can you can pass a simple needle and haystack test, but can you actually use that knowledge? Open question. Yeah. <laughs> We will, uh, we'll, we'll, I, I think, uh, I do think there are some changes. So there's some architectural changes that people are evolving with uh, Mamba and with RWKV that are more recurrent in nature that have um, a, tra uh, a trailing context window. Yeah. 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 Um, so other trends are commodification of intelligence. Uh, this is one from um, Karina Wynn, who is now at uh, OpenAI. Um, but she's basically showing, if you see all these colors, um, the black, the black uh, models are the vintage, the 2022 vintage. The red models are the 2023 vintage, and the purple models are the 2024 vintage. Uh, so they're just getting uh, getting better for the same price at every at every opportunity. For me, I, I don't like to see I like to see things in, in a bit higher fidelity. So this is my version of the charts. You can see the sort of price uh, to um, efficiency, uh, price to performance frontier. Um, so this is where we were in December to March. These are all the sort of Claude, uh, where is Cook here? Command R is, Command R is here. Um, and then in April to July, every, everyone sort of moved to the right, um, which is, and, and this, this at the bottom is a, a log linear chart. So everything like a, a, a linear move here is an order of magnitude improvement in, in prices. Um, and since then with GPT-40 mini, the uh, Gemini 1.5 flash price cut and DeepSeq V2, like people are moving again. Um, and this basically amounts to a hundred X to 1000 X um, drop in price for the same level of intelligence across the board from 1300 in um, LM assist ELO score down to 1150 in ELO score. Everyone's just kind of shifting them to roughly the same gradient. So I think as an engineer, you build with that assumption in mind, like um, and and like you know uh, you know conclude uh, make those conclusions accordingly. Um, the third trend, multimodal everything. I don't think this is uh, something I need to um, elaborate on about. And fourth trend, I think that something is, is something that people aren't really focusing on right now, but it's emerging when, when I talk to people in, in San Francisco. I call this temperature two use cases instead of temperature zero use cases. And so instead of having hallucination be a bug, how can you make um, products where Hallucination is a feature, like uh, use AI as a creativity engine, not as a rephraser of information retrieval systems. Um, so those are those are the general trends that I'm seeing. Okay, lastly, I'm just going to finish it off because I don't want to be too long. Uh, four principles to take home that um, I think, you know, a lot of people talk about like graph reg. A lot of people talk about like, you know, other uh, principles of like building, like using tool usage. I just want to fill in the gaps of like what I did not see here. So the first one is uh, be honest, but optimistic about cost. Um, uh, Arvin Narayan, uh, I think he's a professor at NYU. He's he's got uh, this 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 uh, really awesome blog, AI Snake Oil, that basically calls bullshit on things on the uh, things in AI. And I think we don't do enough calling a bullshit. Um, there's there's a lot of like hype, um, and uh, we need people who are, like call out the truth. And he basically um, went through a lot of Asian papers and said like a lot of these are nonsense. Like, <laughs> and I think you, you kind of need that. So I highly recommend this paper. And it basically is just it's just calling people to be honest about costs. Like it's very easy to burn 100x times um, inference to search the, the solution space to have like a one percent improvement in cost uh, in, in performance, but sometimes it's not worth it. Uh, and that's something that we don't talk about in agents uh, very very much. Secondly, is, is something I'm going to quote myself because I don't have another way of, uh, I don't have another citation to, to offer. Um, in software engineering, we often have this principle of make it work, then make it right, then make it fast. Um, in AI engineering, it's, it's something different. It's kind of make the capability um, possible, then you make it generalizable on your user queries, and then you make it efficient, uh, fast or cheap or whatever. So those are those are that's the second principle. The third principle, um, this one is something where I, I actually disagree with one of my former guests on the podcast. Um, so um, a lot of people are trying to go for level five self-driving um, in, in AI agents. And actually probably those will mostly fail. Um, you want something where like there's sort of a human in the loop or human driving uh, or a human like the, you know, hands are attending to an keyboard, never looking away for more than 30 seconds. That's kind of where the sweet spot is for, for agents. Um, and, and I think that's where like the, the sort of level two, level three autonomy is, is probably the, the sweet spot rather than level four, level five. Okay, lastly, uh, reuse happy paths. Um, 
this is the, the thing I mentioned in, in Devin or playbooks. Like when you figure out something that works, you should you should guide your agents back to the thing that works and not refigure it out again. Um, so that's that's what a Devin playbook is. Um, I don't really see that pattern in a lot of other use cases. You, mostly you'll see this as prompts engineering or like you know sticking things in the prompts. But once you get enough prompts, you'll be able to you you'll need to swap them out. Um, so like being able to reuse prompts that work is, is the general principle. But the most the, the most interesting prompt that works or the, the most reliable prompt that works is prompts that you don't use at all. Like the, the best LLM usage is one where you don't use LLMs, right? Like you just use code. Um, so again, I'll guide you back to Voyager where once you verify that the code works, you just run the code again. And it's obviously cheaper, it's obviously faster, it'll obviously deterministic. Um, so those are the four principles. Um, I, you know, Sandra asked me for like a quick TLDR on the state of agents and that's what I got, thanks. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you so much. All right, folks, we can now get to the next part. Um, I'm going to mention we're coming in right.